going with the, the papers that we have. Um, so really, why are we here? And first of all, how do I actually... Oh, Mike, this is... I just, there, there, is, there is background. Okay, there is background. Um, so this is the running order for today. Um, so we have, well, originally we had six speakers, but unfortunately Susan Lawrence, who was going to be Skyping in from Australia, or it's probably about one o'clock in the morning, she's now withdrawn, which is completely understandable. Um, so we're going to try to keep to these timings, but we may be finishing the break a little bit earlier. Okay, so Coralie, um, you'll be going after Hannah now. Okay. <laughs> um, so why are we here? Well, I, I try to do interdisciplinary work. Um, I have been um, very interested in what William Rafferty has said in, in response to his long-running garbology project, that he argued um, that it's not good enough just to look at material, or the behavioural, or the mental. You have to try to bring all, di all different aspects together. And that can be very hard for any individual researcher to do, and it may be an argument for multi- and interdisciplinary teamwork, but it's something that certainly with my own work I've striven towards. I don't think I've actually reached it, um, but it's something I reach towards. Um, and um, I was struck by this special edition of Nature that came out in 2015. Why does interdisciplinary research matter? And um, what this, um, the introduction to this special edition argued was that there's this increasing trend, as you probably know, to, to do interdisciplinary work. It's something that we're, we're sometimes and often asked to do. Um, and yet, it can actually be quite difficult, not just to put together, to fund, but also to carry out. So why does interdisciplinary work matter? Nature argued that to solve global challenges for big problems of the world and society, scientists need to work together, which makes perfect sense. And that research that transcends conventional academic boundaries is something but can be harder to fund and do, review and publish. Certainly working in Germany, the disciplinary walls around research areas are very clearly defined. Here, I feel a, a greater sense of freedom. I can't say how it is in other parts of the world. Maybe you have those perspectives that you could bring to this discussion. Those that do it um, can be applauded, but they can also struggle for recognition and advancement. Again, um, do you become a jack of all trades when actually to move up the career ladder you need to develop a very defined niche? Um, but interdisciplinary work essentially is considered to be important. It's considered to be increasingly important by governments, by funders, by policy makers, and, and I think here within archaeology, heritage, you name it, <coughs> by university departments. So this was why I reached out to Hannah and Mike, who also do work on industrial parts and legacies, and said, how about we do something at TAG? So this is kind of why we're here. Do you have anything that you want to add I, I, to this? I, yeah, I'm just, this, as far as I'm concerned, this is the third of three very loosely linked research sessions that I've been involved with in the last 24 months around industrial heritage, industrial archaeology, landscape, and uh, cross-border cross working, I suppose, starting with a, a, a research seminar last year, in, uh, no, the year before last, um, run by the Association for Industrial Archaeology, that looked at research, industrial archaeology and heritage research in the UK and its impact from the point of view of who's doing that work, uh, professional archaeologists, research archaeologists, of the voluntary sector. And then followed up last year where we had a, a related session at TAG Chester. And then this, 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 uh, this sort of picks up on some of those themes and, and, and takes it 
uh, takes it even further. So there's a body of, of, of work there, with, and it, it, interestingly, with a group of speakers who actually, the speakers in all three of those events don't overlap very much, which is interesting in itself in terms of are we working from an interdisciplinary point of view, are we actually picking up on various uh, various themes that, that cross in a number of, number of subject areas. So, so it's interesting that uh, across those three events, the, the links themselves are there, but perhaps the, uh, the talking to perhaps isn't, which I think is why it's very relevant to talk about interdisciplinarity and industrial heritage, state history, state archaeology uh, this afternoon. It's enough for me. Um, so the questions that we had in our session abstracts when we put out the call for papers were, were these. Because this year's tag is about power and knowledge, this is essentially about the work of knowledge production. Um, and also where the power lies, again, coming back to things like funding and, um, and, and career advancement and, and how you actually get to do the work, how you can be powered to do the work that you really want to do. So how are new bodies of knowledge and practice being currently formed? Um, what cross or interdisciplinary relationships are being forged, no pun, industrial, forged. How do you scale your own disciplinary walls if you want to? Maybe you're happy in your walls. Um, are there any anxieties about politics, disciplinary history, identity, funding, your career, acceptance and recognition, or is it all good? Um, what's it like to pursue research outside your comfort zone? And what benefits does interdisciplinarity bring? If anybody wants to argue against the idea that interdisciplinarity, I can't even say it is, is good, then please do so. Um, forgive me, tag party last night, I'm still getting over it. Um, okay, housekeeping. I've already mentioned that Susan Lawrence unfortunately has pulled out, so there's one correction to the original published program. Um, we've decided that we're going to have Q&A sessions, um, so one before the break with the speakers that have spoken, and then one at the end, rather than having Q&A after each paper. I hope that's okay with the speakers. And um, we will be finishing early, we'll be finishing at five o'clock. The reason for that is that um, myself and Hannah are both um, council members of the Society for Post Medieval Archaeology and tonight is the AGM and then there's going to be a lecture by Dr. Tanya Manuel Casimiro and we're going to have to hot foot it over to um, the University of Liverpool in London campus. Um, We'd like to extend an invitation to you to come with us if you want to. So we'll be leaving very promptly at five o'clock. So we need to be there for 5.30. And um, so that's why we're finishing early. <coughs> and um, tweets away. Um, if any speakers don't want um, their discussion or images tweeted, then please do so at the beginning of your paper so people know. Okay, any questions? So far.